Hello everyone and welcome to Top Tips for Archaeology Graduates. Today we are joined by George. Hi George, how are you today? Hi Penny, I'm well thanks. How are you? Thank, I'm well too. Um, <laughs> thank you for joining us. Uh, George is a Historic Buildings Consultant for Cotswold Archaeology. Um, so maybe you could tell us a little bit about that role. What is a Historic Buildings Consultant? Um, so my job is kind of twofold really. I'm, I'm primarily looking at um, historic buildings uh, in the sort of context of development. So how modern developments are going to affect uh, built heritage. Um, but we also do a lot of historic building surveys. So again, it ties into this whole development aspect, but we're looking at sort of making a record of these buildings before any kind of um, damage is probably quite a strong word, but it is kind of damage that is done to them through sort of modernization and conversion and things like that. So can I ask, who do you work with in terms of Cotswold archaeology? What does that mean working for a commercial unit and doing this kind of role? Um, so working with a commercial unit, um, so I work in a team of historic buildings consultants, but we're part of the wider consultancy team. So, I mean, a lot of the time we work quite closely with sort of conventional archaeological consultants um, if we have bigger sites that involve built heritage and below ground archaeology. Um, we'll work closely with them but our department's relatively small because it's a kind of ar archaeological consultancy is more kind of in depth and there's more to it um, in terms of scale but built heritage is still quite an important aspect of um, consultancy at Cotswold. And a lot of people live in historic houses in the UK as well. So it's a very, exactly, it's a, yeah. yeah, it's uh, where I'm in my uh, Victorian terrace at the moment, which was built in 1884. So, you know, lots of important heritage that people actually live within. And, and I'm sure that relates a lot to the, the role that you do as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, and it's a lot of the time it's kind of smaller buildings like that where kind of unassuming not big listed manor houses it's the smaller buildings that people live in and they want to I don't know put a conservatory on the back or something and they need heritage consultants to go in to make sure they're not going to do any kind of negative impact to the sort of significance of that building. What do you enjoy about your role? Um, what I really enjoy is the site visits I mean it's quite a um, a mixture of office work and site work um, but I've always enjoyed the site work aspects of buildings archaeology particularly um, and that goes right back to when I was at university. I, I really enjoy doing the survey side of things so photographic survey and measured survey as well, creating the drawings, um, building plans, elevations, all that kind of thing um, but working with clients as well is also quite an enjoyable aspect of it, working with designs for their schemes of work on historic buildings and that kind of thing. So the other side of that is what is more challenging about your role? Oh, that, <laughs> <laughs> that, that working with clients bit is probably the more challenging side of it um, because you're, you're trying to kind of find a balance between what your client wants and then what conservation officers and planning officers want to do as well. And that always ties back to sort of national and local policy and legislation and all of this kind of long winded stuff that you can get quite bogged down in. <laughs> uh, so many people, when I ask them what's the best and worst parts of their job, say exactly the same thing. There's something in there that I think we should go away and think about, about, you know, we like to be challenged. And when, when things go well, yeah. it's wonderful. And when things don't, that, that's that's when the challenge comes in. So Absolutely. how did you get into this role then? You talked a little bit there about how you enjoyed survey back in your undergraduate degree. What were the steps that you took to, to the uh, role that you're in at the moment? Um, so I think I was quite lucky going into university because I always knew that I wanted to do to work with historic buildings and that's why I chose York to begin with so I did my undergraduate at York um, and that was quite a good introduction to archaeology generally and then as you progress through the years you kind of have these opportunities to focus your interests um, towards the end of your degree um, but after that I actually went out as a field archaeologist and worked as a field archaeologist for two years um but you know I always knew that I wanted to work with buildings so I ended up coming back to York 
um, for my master's um, in the archaeology of buildings. And um, that's where I kind of eventually found my love of surveying buildings and doing all that kind of thing. Um, so what kind of roles have you held then as a historic buildings consultant? Did you go straight into the job at Cotswold, apply from it straight from your master's or were there a couple of different steps? Um, so I think I was quite lucky at York, um, especially towards the end, because I managed to find a job quite quickly um, in Sheffield, actually, the job that I had before this one. Um, and that was more of a kind of buildings archaeologist. So it was more focused on this, on the survey aspect of things and um, writing up the sort of historic side and survey side of the reports as opposed to the consultancy stuff. Um, so yeah, that's how I kind of got to where I am now. And then I moved to Cotswold and I've shifted a bit. It's still, it's still very similar, but it's a, a slightly different. So a slight, a slight progression then in terms of sort of taking on different responsibilities and perhaps having to develop different skills. In a way, yeah, because I mean, what I do now, we we go in quite early on in the sort of stages of the, our clients um, development schemes and we'll help them to sort of figure out what they can and can't do um, at the beginning so that they don't kind of go gung ho and do something they're going to regret later on down the line. Um, but along with that, that comes, as you say, it's more responsibility um, on you to work in your client's best interests, um, as opposed to just going in and surveying their buildings for them. Yeah. yeah. So apply, applying what you're learning. So um, can I ask you, uh, obviously you knew from the beginning, which is wonderful, you wanted to work with historic buildings what kind of um skills and knowledges do you feel like your degrees that you gave you i guess both in terms of the specific knowledge things that you took away but also those softer transferable skills um, that you value now in your career um so yeah i mean speaking quite broadly the degrees both the degrees i did at york um everyone talks about um how much they hate doing presentations and that kind of thing and our assess lectures as well um and I don't think I've met anyone that hasn't had a bit of a kind of complaint about those but I mean when you look back at it I mean I, I do presentations now to clients and um, colleagues and I'm, I'm constantly communicating with people um albeit virtually now but um those skills that you learn to kind of present presentation skills are very important for my job anyway um but then also going down more specifically, I think, the, especially my masters, you get to learn a lot of very specific skills if you choose to kind of do those modules. So I learned about building survey, how to do all of that kind of thing, um, and then kind of used that as a basis um, and then kind of developed from there to into my previous job where I was doing more survey and now still, um, I still do survey now, but it's kind of <laughs> the other byproducts of the other stuff. Yeah. That's nice. So both both transferable skills and also specific ones focused within within the masters. Um, can I ask you if uh, uh, prospective students, uh, graduates are listening to this and they think, yes, historic buildings is the area that I want to be working in, perhaps as a consultant or a surveyor, what kind of advice would you give? What top tips would you give? Um, I think, I mean, from being at university, you mean when you're, yeah. when you're studying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one, one thing that I learned from doing my undergrad and then having some time away before doing my masters, that taught me a lot, I think, about what I actually wanted to do. And I feel like if I had gone straight from my undergrad into my masters, because I went straight from kind of sixth form into university as well taking that little bit of time out really helped me kind of <laughs> develop in a way and um, even lecturers that I knew like Dav he noticed a difference in me when I came back to do my master's because I'd had that kind of real world experience if you like and um, I mean I, I was I was very lucky to be able to get a job obviously and I know that you know some people struggle um, and I obviously have done as well but um, 
it's easy to say like, oh yeah, get a job after uni and go out and get some life experience. Um, but it really does help, even if you're kind of volunteering in something that you're vaguely interested in doing, whether it's sort of conventional archaeology, you want to be a field archaeologist, buildings archaeology, museum type things, you know, it's important. And it's something that I wish I had kind of engaged more with when I was doing my undergraduate. Um, and another side of that is also being talking to your lecturers. <laughs> so like I, I learned um, that, again, from the difference between my undergrad and my master's, when I was doing my undergrad, I didn't engage as much as I probably should have done. But when I went back to my master's, I did a lot. And I was, I talked to Dav Smith and Matt Jenkins about buildings archaeology, careers in buildings archaeology, um, and Gareth Dean as well, and Lou about conservation with historic buildings. And it's, I don't know if you can really call it networking, but I guess it is in a way, because they kind of gave me some really good advice about finding jobs in historic buildings and moving into the commercial world as well. So yeah, I think those are the two takeaways I think that I got from kind of comparing my undergrad and my masters. Um, really, really useful insight to have. Like you, I took some time out, time out between my undergraduate and my masters to, it's not time out. Working in archeology span as a field archeologist, I work for Wessex Archeology span mainly, taught me so much about myself about team working, yeah. communications. And, you know, if you're having a bad day on site because the weather is terrible, you have a robustness to get through things that I think, you know, yeah. no other skill will give you. Um, and so I think it's, as you said, it's really valuable real life experience where you really have to sort of put into practice the things that you've been learning in theory and those team working skills that you've done through yeah. team projects and, and presentation communication things as well. And that, I think that's a really nice insight to provide to to students the other thing about networking and about talking to your lecturers i think we sometimes view networking as something that's for the corporate world of people in yeah. suits shaking hands with other people and, and and trying to get ahead in business but actually it's more about getting to know the field making friends finding out what's new and exciting um and and uh, appreciating and understanding more about the world that you're working in you, you found that through york which is amazing but yeah. i think i think that's that that is networking it's it, but it's not the kind of suited up tie wearing no professional view that we and have that, sometimes yeah and i think anyone that goes into archaeology will recognize that it's it's quite an informal um sort of discipline and that kind of if you establish those kind of networking skills and talking to people as you say making friends that will transfer into your job. Like I was the same with you. I went into field archaeology and that was one of the things I really, really enjoyed about field archaeology was meeting all of these people. And that's why I, I recommend field work to anyone that wants to do it. I know a lot of people don't enjoy it and I completely get that because, you know, when you're kind of slogging it in the mud and it's like minus five, it's not much fun. Um, but you build these relationships with people. And what I really enjoyed was meeting people from all over the world from different backgrounds. And that's one real positive of archaeology, I think, is that it, it brings all of these people together that you would never meet in any other kind of situation. And it also puts you in a really extreme situation with them. So, <laughs> so you know, you get, you become very close to these people. Yeah, it's incredibly valuable. And it's a lovely point on which to end uh, this interview. Thank you so much, George, for sharing your experiences and some of your advice and guidance. Thank you to our audience for watching. Join us again next time for more top tips for archaeology graduates.